Good morning, boys and girls. Well, we have made it to the day of the cross. We have journeyed every day this week together to get to this point today. And today is called Good Friday. Now you may be asking, Miss Joanna, why would it be called Good Friday? Isn't this a sad day? Isn't this a day when Jesus died, so why would we call that good? Have you ever asked that before? Well, one thing we have to understand is in order for us to be able to celebrate Easter on Sunday, his resurrection, we have to go back to today. On Friday, the day he died, there would be no resurrection without Friday, right? And so for that reason alone, today is good because this is the day that Jesus gave us life eternal. He died for you and for me so that we wouldn't have to. He died the most horrible, awful, sad death anyone could ever die. You know, crucifying someone on a cross was the worst punishment that anyone could think of. And it was only reserved for the, the worst of criminals. Now, was Jesus a criminal? No, he was perfect, he was God, he never sinned, not even once. And yet here he was willing to walk that road and willing to die on the cross for you and for me because someone has to pay for our sins. Someone had to pay for the sins of the world. And it should have been me to pay for my sin. It should have been you to pay for your sin because the Bible says for the payment of sin, the wage of sin is death. And the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus. And so here is God coming down, willing to give of his own son through Jesus to die a cruel death on a cross for you and for me so that we wouldn't have to. I want us to sit and dwell on that thought today, boys and girls. I do not want to go into great detail about the suffering that he, that he went through but you can read about that as you continue to grow in your faith and get older. But it is all right here in God's word for you and me to read and to know, wow, Jesus went through so much so that you and I could one day be with him forever and our sins could be wiped away forever. So Good Friday is indeed good because of what God did for you and me today. So as we think about the darkness and the sadness of this day, you know, nobody knew the end like you and me do today. Back then and, and when it happened, no one knew that Jesus would come back to life. I mean, God knew, of course, but no one knew yet. And so of course it was dark, it was sad, it was lonely, it was depressing. And I wanna read in John, no, in Luke, actually, um, just a few verses that talk about how dark it became. And that's why you see here candles, and it's a little darker today so that we can uh, feel a sense of darkness and, and yet know that there's light. There's light. So let's read out of Luke 23, just a few verses. I want to read um, verse 44. It says, once Jesus had, had breathed his last, he was crucified between two criminals. Again, this was the most gruesome way to die. He carried his own cross up to this hill, and he was placed on a cross between two criminals. And when it was now about noon, darkness came over the whole land until three o'clock because the sun's light failed. The curtain of the sanctuary was split down the middle, and Jesus called out with a loud voice, Father, into your hands I entrust my spirit. And saying this, he breathed his last. 
When the centurion, the soldier, saw what happened, he began to glorify God, saying, This man really was righteous. All the crowds had gathered for that spectacle. When they saw what had taken place, they went home striking their chests. But all who knew, knew him, including the women who had followed him from Galilee, stood at a distance watching these things. And then there was a good and righteous man named Joseph, who he was not in agreement with their plan. He was from Arimathea, and he was looking forward to the kingdom of God. He approached Pilate and asked for Jesus' body. Taking it down, Joseph wrapped it in fine linen and placed it in a tomb cut into the rock where no one had ever been placed. It was the preparation day, and the Sabbath was about to begin. The women who had come with him from Galilee followed along and observed the tomb and how his body was placed. Then they returned and prepared spices and perfumes, and they rested on the Sabbath according to the commandment. And so here they are. They are probably feeling great sadness, a loss of hope. I can't even imagine what it must have been like to see Jesus on that cross. He died, and it was very clear that he was dead at that point. They took the body down. A really wonderful, righteous man named Joseph wanted to take care of his body and prepare it and put it in one of his tombs that he had, and it, it was near where he had died. And the women were there, and you can imagine what they must have been feeling in that moment. A great sadness and darkness. And, and at the same time, a deep love for Jesus. And so, as we think about Good Friday, I want to ask some questions to you. You know, why, why did the men put Jesus on the cross? He didn't deserve it, did he? He didn't sin. He, he didn't deserve a criminal's death like that. Well, he claimed to be God, and they did not like that, right? They did not think that he was God, and how could he? But we know he was, didn't we? Why did God let Jesus be on the cross? Why did he let Jesus die like that on the cross? He let Jesus be in our place to get rid of sin once and for all. That Jesus was the only way that we would ever be free from sin. Jesus was the perfect son of God, right? And so he was the only one that could be in our place because we've all sinned. We've all done bad things. Remember, we've talked about that a sin is anything that we think, say, or do that doesn't please God. And you and I sin every day, and we can't do enough good things to get out of our sin or to make our sin go away or to, to be weighed our good versus our bad. And maybe if we do enough good, then it'll outweigh our bad. That is not the way it works. That we are sinful and we need a Savior. And only Jesus could be that, that lamb, that perfect sacrifice. Just like we talked in the Old Testament many times now about how you had to present a perfect sacrifice, an animal, in your place. Well, that was the Old Testament. And Jesus was now coming to be the perfect Lamb of God, the perfect sacrifice for you and me. So how serious is sin to God? Very serious because it had to require death, right? That's why Jesus came to die was because sin was a big deal and God had to deal with it because a perfect God cannot be where sin is. And so Jesus was that mediator. He was the one that came to join me and you to God, back to God. So will Jesus um, save me from my sins? What if I've done some bad things? Will he still save me? Yes, the Bible says 
that if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just and will forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So any sin that you or I have done today, yesterday, tomorrow, throughout our lives, Jesus has already paid the price for it. And that's what he did on Good Friday on this day. How does that make you feel about what Jesus did? You know, he did it out of love. He did it out of out of his love for you and me. And I want you to dwell on his love today. That's why he did it. And there's a song that is really special to me that I want to share with you as we close and as we think about um, Jesus and his love and his sacrifice today um, for you and me. This was a song that was played at my wedding um, many years ago. And it's still, every time I hear it, I just draw close to God and his love. And it's called How Deep the Father's Love for Us. And I would encourage you to listen to it. You know, YouTube has a lot of videos. Um, and I would encourage you to get on there and I will actually link a video for you to listen to that song because the words are so powerful and so wonderful. And I want to read those words like a poem to us today. So it says, How deep the Father's love for us, how vast beyond all measure, that he should give his only son to make a wretch his treasure. How great the pain of searing loss. The father turns his face away as wounds which mar the chosen one bring many sons to glory. Behold the man upon a cross, my sin upon his shoulders. Ashamed I hear my mocking voice call out among the scoffers. It was my sin that held him there until it was accomplished. His dying breath has brought me life and you life. I know that it is finished. I will not boast in anything. No gifts, no power, no wisdom. But I will boast in Jesus Christ. His death and resurrection. Why should I gain from his reward? I cannot give an answer. But this I know with all my heart, his wounds have paid my ransom. You know, we were slaves to sin before Jesus died. We were slaves in our sin. And what that means, boys and girls, is that without Jesus, we are stuck in our sin. We are stuck. But because Jesus paid the price for your sin and my sin, on that cross, this cross, this gruesome, horrible death that he, that he died and went through for you and me, we can now be free in Christ. He can take our sin away when we confess it and wipe it away just like on a whiteboard when you take that eraser and wipe it clean. He can do that for you. And I hope that you know Jesus personally. If you don't, I want you to reach out to me or to your parent or to your Sunday school teacher, someone that you love and trust to tell you more about it because there's nothing greater than knowing the love of God, knowing it personally, that Jesus loves you and he loves me. And that is why we celebrate Good Friday. It is good only because we know what's coming on Sunday. So I cannot wait to welcome you back on Sunday morning as we say, he is risen. But until that day, I want you to, to think about the cost and the price of what Jesus did for you and me on that cross and just dwell in that today and remember his deep, deep love for you. We'll see you later.